Let's uh, shift our focus to the Taiwan Strait. Yes, tensions have been peaking after China's recent military drills that involved aerial and naval blockades near Taiwan. In the latest development, China has released a fresh set of revised rules for military recruitment in wartime, which are set to come into effect next month. The move is being analyzed as a reflection of China's seriousness to be able to ward off Taiwan in a conflict. This comes after Taiwan President Tsai, Tsai Ing-wen met uh, with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in California, sparking condemnation from China. And joining me now to take this forward is Brahma Chalani, strategic affairs expert. Uh, Mr. Chalani, thank you so much for being with us. Three days of intensive simulations around the Taiwanese Strait. How serious is this? How different is this from previous military drills carried out by China? The first thing to remember is that Chinese military drills are really empty shows of force. The present China-India military standoff is a consequence of how China's unusually large winter exercises on the Tibetan Plateau in early 2020 became the launch pad for China's stealthy land grabs in Ladakh. And this has triggered this continuing military confrontation between India and China. So given what China is doing against Taiwan, we should not underestimate China's designs against Taiwan. What we saw over the last three days was a repeat of what happened in August last year when China conducted military drills right around Taiwan. These live-fire military drills around Taiwan effectively simulate an air and sea blockade. So this really gives you an idea as to how Xi Jinping will launch his aggression against Taiwan. It will begin with an air and sea blockade of Taiwan. Hmm. Do you think uh, there is a possibility of an invasion? Uh, a blockade or even a quarantine over, over Taiwan. Shipping activities have been restricted. Earlier, there were some reports of China wanting to impose a no-fly zone over Taiwan. Unlike uh, the Russian style of aggression, which is, you know, full-fledged aggression, or the American style of aggression that we saw against Iraq or, you know, against um, Libya or other places, the Chinese style of aggression after the disastrous Chinese invasion of Vietnam in 1979, the Chinese style is incremental aggression. We've seen that in the South China Sea, how they've changed the entire map of South China Sea without firing a single shot. And we saw that in Ladakh, how they changed the territorial status quo without firing a single shot. So against Taiwan, it won't be a full-fledged aggression. It will be a, it will begin with an air and sea blockade. And the drills that we have seen in recent days allowed Chinese troops to practice enforcing a quarantine around Taiwan. That would result in Taiwan's gradual economic strangulation. So it will be a strategy of calibrated squeeze hmm. to force Taiwan to unify with China. <coughs> hmm. Mr. Chalani, do you think this will also test the U.S. leadership in the region at a time when U.S. leadership, U.S. US's <clears throat> status as a superpower is at test in the Ukraine-Russia war? What happens with Taiwan? And if China is able to impose that blockade or quarantine and that continues for a few months, uh, do you think that will test U.S. dominance in the region and U.S. Uh, role in the region as well? You're absolutely right. You know, in fact, it's a very good question. If Taiwan were to fall to China, it would significantly advance China's hegemonic ambitions in Asia and upend the balance of power in the Indo-Pacific region, not least by enabling China to break out of the so-called first island chain. But more importantly, it will mark the end of America's global preeminence. This will be the final nail in the coffin of America's global preeminence. And yet, ironically, as many American analysts are pointing out, the Biden administration is more focused on helping Ukraine fight Russia 
rather than deterring China's aggression against Taiwan. Even though the future of American power rests on Taiwan's autonomous status being safeguarded. But there are also important implications for India. If Taiwan falls, the next mm -hmm. territory China is likely to covet and target is the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal is three times bigger than Taiwan. And in the name of quote-unquote reunification, China will begin targeting India's Arunachal Pradesh. So India too has a stake mm. in the present status quo in relation to Taiwan. If that status quo is disturbed, it will have a significant bearing on Asian security, on American security and on Indian security. Right. Uh, what I would also like to ask you, what is India's policy vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan right now, Mr. Chilane? Uh, we have been seeing that for some time in bilateral conversations, India has not been uh, clearly spelling out the one China principle as China wants it. Do you think there is any kind of change in India's strategy vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan? What are our cultural relations or uh, democratic relations with Taiwan as of now? Well, given China's designs on uh, Taiwan and also China's designs on Arunachal Pradesh, that we have, you know, in recent days, uh, we have seen how China has stepped up its renaming of places within Indian control. So given those realities, it's become imperative for India to hold consultations with like-minded powers, including Japan, Australia, and the United States, as to how each nation can contribute to Taiwan's security. Of course, uh, America's role is central to Taiwan's autonomous future. A U.S. that fails to prevent Taiwan's subjugation would be widely seen as unable or unwilling to defend any other ally. So the status quo on Taiwan is more likely to be preserved if the U.S. coordinates its Taiwan defense plans with India, Japan, and Australia, including how to respond to potential Chinese moves to restrict access to Taiwan, whether physically or digitally. I think the only thing that can deter China from aggression mm -hmm. against Taiwan is the expectation that it would incur high concrete costs. That is the only thing that can deter China. Mm. Right. Uh, my final set of questions, uh, Mr. Jalani. Now, as far as uh, the, the situation with the drills go, uh, do you think... Uh, Taiwan has the wherewithal to probably make sure that there is no blockade, no quarantine. And if this blockade happens, if this quarantine happens, how different is it from a full-blown invasion? And what are the consequences? A full-blown invasion would mean that Chinese troops would uh, cross the strait and land on Taiwanese territory. Defense is always easier than offense. Taiwan can wait for such a Chinese invasion and give the Chinese, the invading Chinese forces, a bloody nose. But that's not going to be the Chinese way of attacking Taiwan. The, the Chinese way of attacking Taiwan would be to impose an aerial and sea blockade. To prevent such a blockade, Taiwan by itself doesn't have that capability to prevent China from enforcing a quarantine. So that's where the American role becomes so critical. And once Xi Jinping begins his strategy of slowly strangulating Taiwan, what I call the slow squeeze, once the slow squeeze begins, at what time the US will say, this is an act of war that merits America's direct involvement. That will then determine Taiwan's future. If the Americans wait too long, then Taiwan 
will have no capacity to withstand this kind of indirect attack on its sovereignty and integrity. The fact is the Taiwanese government has disclosed in recent weeks that Taiwan only has 11 days of gas reserves. So here is a vibrant island democracy, which is also a very wealthy economy, which is very heavily dependent on energy imports, whose reserves will last only some days. And once the Chinese enforce a blockade of Taiwan, the Taiwanese ec economy will begin to collapse. That's the reason why the Biden administration must take the Chinese threat very seriously. These latest exercises are a reminder to Washington that the Chinese aggression against Taiwan may come sooner than many in Washington expect. Right. Uh, Mr. Chinayin, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here on Global Eye. Clearly, what's happening between Taiwan and China is something that India needs to watch out very clearly. And uh, a blockade or even a quarantine will have consequences if uh, it continues for uh, even four to five months for that matter. Thank you once again for being with us. That's a wrap on this edition of Global Eye. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.